Hey, welcome back everybody. I'm Drone Tech and tonight I have a clip for you that I think you're really gonna like. It comes from a PBS show called Firing Line with Margaret Hoover. I'm not real familiar with Margaret Hoover. I do know that she's an anti-Trump lady, which is surprising being on PBS, which is decidedly left-wing and uh, publicly funded in part. But yesterday she did an interview with a Chinese activist named Ai Weiwei, and he was actually a political prisoner in China for some time. But her question to him is an attempt to tie Trump to authoritarianism. And the response that she gets is not what she wanted. In your book, you're describing the directives of Mao Zedong during the Cultural Revolution that would be distributed publicly every night. And then you write, this is your quote, they served a function similar to Donald Trump's late night tweets while in office. They were the direct communication of a leader's thoughts to his devoted followers, enhancing the sanctity of his authority. All right, first question that comes to my mind is why would this not apply to Joe Biden? Joe Biden tweets out every single day and there's some tweets late at night. Why wouldn't the same logic apply to him? Well, of course, because this is a Democrat show on a Democrat network and they want to keep the focus away from Joe Biden, the, the guy in power, and focused on their political opponents. But it's funny because she doesn't have the self-awareness to realize this. And so the question that she asks him here does not get answered in the way that she thought it would. So do you see Donald Trump as an authoritarian? I, well, I don't, you know, he, if you are authoritarian, you have to have a system in supporting you. Yes. You cannot just be authoritarian by yourself. Yes, exactly. And this is something that I've talked about on my channel going back years during the Trump administration when the media would constantly accuse him of being an authoritarian dictator. And the question that obviously uh, is raised there is how would that work when literally every institution or most of them are openly aligned against Donald Trump. And these same institutions are also very clearly aligned with his political opponents. I mean, you have the media, you have the education system, you have Hollywood, you have the courts, and worst of all, our intelligence agencies. Given all the corruption that the FBI was willing to accept and their mission to destroy Donald Trump, I really don't see how he could ever be an authoritarian that would stay in power. However, look at how all of these exact same institutions are aligned with the party that's currently in power, the Democrat Party. These institutions are sales people and a rubber stamp for whatever Biden and Democrats want to do. You will find very little, if any, scrutiny or criticism of Biden or Democrats policies. They're all treated like they're perfect and good simply because of who they came from. From their support of increasingly authoritarian COVID policies to an education system that frames concerned parents as domestic terrorists with the backing of the state. We have a system that actively promotes and covers for violent left-wing mobs that end up looking very similar to brown shirts in the way that they operate. So, do you see Donald Trump as an authoritarian? I, well, I don't, you know, he, if you are authoritarian, you have to have a system in supporting you. You cannot just be authoritarian by yourself. Right. But uh, certainly in the United States, with today's uh, condition, you can easily have an authoritarian. In many ways, you're already in the authoritarian state. You just don't know it. Yeah, and the irony here is that the reporter that he's talking to is literally one of these people who's giving support and cover to an authoritarian state. Right now, the Democrat Party is in charge. They have all the power, and it's been that way for the last 11 months. Yet, what is this reporter on publicly funded news media talking about? Not the party in power, not Joe Biden, but Trump, her political opposition, and a guy that's out of power. So when he says that you don't even know it, it's like he's talking to her. How so? Many things in the authoritarian state. In many ways, you're already in the authoritarian state. You just don't know it. How so? <laughs> many things happens today in US. This can be compared to cultural revol revolution in yes. China. Like what? <laughs> I have to stop it there real quick. Look at, just look at that face. Look at her attitude. Suddenly changed her whole demeanor. She was very happy when she thought that they were gonna be talking about Trump and comparing him to authoritarian. But the second that he turned it around on her, look, she's got this 
sort of bitchy face, bitchy attitude, like, like what? But his comparison to things happening in the United States that are like the Cultural Revolution in China, which is also something I've talked about in the past. Now, full disclosure, I am not a an expert on the Cultural Revolution, on Marxism, on critical theory, any of these things, but I know a little bit about them. And there's some connections that are easy to make. So you got critical race theory being injected into all of our institutions. Critical race theory is derived from critical theory. The person who came up with CRT has said that. Now, both of these ideologies are Marxist ideologies. And when it comes to the Maoist revolution, they use critical theory as a pretext that led to the murder of millions of people. So yeah, it's more than a little concerning that CRT seems to have been injected everywhere. And in all these places, the people in the institutions are claiming that it's nowhere to be seen while also simultaneously condemning anybody who wants to ban it. Many things happens today in US is can be compared to cultural revol revolution in China. Like what? <laughs> like people trying to be unified in certain political correctness. That is very dangerous. <laughs> okay. So uh, I don't have the full interview of that. Uh, if I can find it, I will link it for you in the description and pin comment. But uh, obviously what he's talking about there is this leftist push to force everybody into this way of thinking. A way of thinking, by the way, which as he compared it to is very similar to what he saw in the Cultural Revolution in China. The people that are pushing all of this in this country are left-wingers themselves, varying degrees of socialist, Marxist, and communist. And those people are the ones in power right now. People like Margaret Hoover here, who should be holding power to account, the people that are in power are Democrats, she's not doing that. In fact, she bristles at the very idea that this guy would turn it around and say, and he was very gentle, by the way, he could have been way tougher, but you know, gently pointing out that the people in power right now are the people who are getting no, you know, critical scrutiny. They have full backing by a media, full backing by all these institutions, the intelligence agencies. So who is to stop Democrats, uh, if not Joe Biden, from becoming full-blown authoritarians? There's nothing except for, you know, you got Fox News, you got OAN, Newsmax, you got people on YouTube like uh, Tim Pool and Steven Crowder and me. Not that I rise to their level, but that's my point, is that essentially what you have is this small cadre of people that are pushing back against a huge machine that really has uh, no brakes on it whatsoever. If it did, you would see Margaret Hoover here using her position to keep that power in check. She's not. She's actually helping it to sustain power. And what is it I'm always talking about here that these people are doing with this power? They're using it to censor their political opposition, demonize their political opposition as domestic terrorists that are a threat to democracy. I, if you get on Twitter, you will see that reporters on, on all these cable networks and uh, the news networks spend all their time either promoting and defending Biden and Democrats or demonizing their political opposition, rationalizing reasons why the government should be used or why these private companies should be censoring people that criticize them and oppose them politically. All right, folks, that's about all I have for this one. I do really quick want to implore you that if you do not have an emergency food storage, you got to get one going now because look all around you, you see supply chain issues, inflation, you never know what is going to happen. And I'll tell you, it gives you a really nice peace of mind to know that no matter what happens, you have food storage that'll keep you alive. So head on over to preparewithdronetech.com. If you're going to build up one of these food storages, you might as well support a channel that you like while doing it. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comments.